Mary Beth, welcome back. Welcome back to the show. We just had you on not too long ago, but I would love to hear an update of Perry and Willow. How are they doing? They're doing really great. Um, they just spent a week at Auntie Autumn's house. Uh, we had a little family vacay. Couldn't take them with us. So um, they've really enjoyed that. And um, it's been a little warmer in our area. So despite winter, they are enjoying more outside activities. And then when they're inside, they are, uh, you know, roasting beside the fire. And uh, Perry, of course, they fight over who gets the warmest spot. And Perry's been singeing his little butt bristles. <laughs> against the pain of our wood stove and of course it doesn't hurt him but his bristles have yeah you go to pet him it's like what you think it's like a whole degree coarser than typical so um <laughs> they've been doing really well um so I'm grateful I'm so glad how about tree family party piggies we're doing really well. Um, I think I'd mentioned when I was on last time, we were going to full time um, and the piggies have been loving it. In fact, on their days off, they're a little bored um, and not causing trouble, but you can just tell they love being out and about and the amount of bribery it takes for me uh, to get them to leave an entertainment space is only increasing because of their love for it. So, That's um, awesome. you know, most people just think it's endearing, you know, that I have to coax them to leave, but, um, yeah, our senior living, uh, services are just increasing. I would say we're, um, statistically we're setting about 10 appointments a week, uh, for future dates. Um, so, Anyway, of course, that's some significant sales effort on my part, but um, man, people are just loving it. Private birthday parties. We're working on some fair contracts right now for the summer and uh, even fundraisers. People are like, oh, any chance you can get the piggy to show up in a tux and give a little kiss, you know, and we're like, sure. <laughs> so that's been going well. We're really excited just what we're expanding into, which is helping other pet pig owners um, respond to this need that people have for many pet pigs um, and therapy pet services and teaching them how to do what we did without uh, all the headaches and uh, learning curves that we had to go through. So very cool. I love that. I love that there are going to be more pigs out there that are going to be able to make people happy. Just so cool. Oh, I know. Now, recently, the reason I wanted to have you back on the show so quickly was because you recently had an experience with your pigs that was really scary. And I would love for you to share that with everybody. Um, this is something that we can all learn from and something that I'm very passionate about. So would you tell us what happened? Yeah, um, we were coming back from a full day of family pet services. I think we had seen about five uh, senior living facilities that day. Um, so I had taken both pigs because we switched them in and out to conserve energy and let them rest. And um, it was after dark and uh, we were traveling a major highway. We weren't a lot of cars, um, but uh, I had a car in my right lane and um, suddenly um, into my headlight field, I see not one, but two deer. I'm going about 75 miles an hour, or highways about 70 miles an hour speed limit. And um so I'm like, okay, one, I missed the one. I can't swerve to the right because there's a car. Can't swerve to the left because there's, you know, the uh, median that has uh, at an incline. So I probably rolled it going that speed if I would hit it. Um, so I slowed down as much as I could in 2.5 seconds or however much time I had, but I missed the first one and hit the second one square on. Um, and so I was in this high speed collision and, um, my hood actually flew up, completely blocked my windshield, totaled my car. Um, I think I, we had airbag deployment. Um, I had, you know, seatbelt burns for a week or so. Um, so it was not fun. But um, what we are so grateful for is I was not hurt and the pigs are not hurt. And, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about how to safely travel with your pet. But I guess I've, I've never done anything different because I basically learned everything from you and I followed your um, directives. And so we've always put our pigs in our cargo or luggage compartment, and they are always secured in either a soft or a hard crate. Um, soft up until recently, um, they were crated in a hard crate, I believe, uh, when we had the accident um, because they've been tearing apart their soft crates and I'm tired of going through them. Um, but what that does is it really protects the pet from ejection or, um, in the case of really severe uh, car accidents, or in our case, if they would have been riding in the front or the passenger or in the, 
even the back seat, they would have been flung forward, either up into where the windshield is or down into where our legs go, um, or been slammed up against something like the dashboard, the steering wheel, whatever, or into me. I mean, Mm -hmm. Um, I actually am a certified paramedic. I think I can still say that because my license expires sometime in the next couple of days. But um, so I know a lot of statistics. If you are unbuckled or something is um, not restrained, it is uh, 90% likely to get ejected in the case of a rollover. Um, So, and of course, mine, that accident could very easily have been a rollover. But um, anyway, with pigs... um, let's say their, their weak spots or where, you know, really bad injuries could happen would be like their trachea, you know, breaking a limb, like a leg, cause they have all this weight, you know, being supported by those, um, just even blunt trauma, like being thrown up against a dashboard could cause liver issues, bleeding. The list just goes on. We all know pigs don't do great under anesthesia. You would never, ever want your pet to experience that kind of trauma. And, um, so, my point that I'm getting to is we've always restrained them in the back and they're free to turn around in their crate and wink at us and do all the things, but they're never riding in our lap. Um, the only time I would do that is if I was like going through a drive through, you know, or, you know, doing something where we're in a parking lot and it's really slow, 15 mile an hour, that kind of thing. Um, I think I'd be afraid the pig would try to like, climb out the window <laughs> or something. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we had this accident. Um, I somehow, I think I looked between the hood and the dashboard, you know, that couple inches with the hood up to like guide it into the median, um, as I was like de decelerating, that's a word. Um, and so thankfully, you know, nothing like being thrown up against a seat happened to them. The most trauma they experienced, which I shouldn't air quote it because it is legit trauma was, you know, having to be transferred on, you know, with police lights, you know, flashing into their crate. We had uh, someone with a pickup truck. Um, we, we, I, I physically lifted Willow out of the car. She of course was on a leash to harness. Oh my goodness. Um, unloading pets on a highway. It's no joke. Um, or any roadway I've had to do it multiple times. So you always want them leashed and harness. You have full control over them because even if you're pulling them out of a car, you know, and they're standing, you know, maybe between the crate and the edge of the car, they still can jump and do whatever. Right. right. Know, That's scary. Like a, a big truck whoosh by and, you know, it startled them. And right. Anyway, so we safely unloaded Willow. We just kept parrying the crate. Me and another person just carried the crate to the back of the truck bed. We covered it with blankets. So it would be as minimally, um, you know, really scary as possible. Yeah. yeah. yeah Wendy. And then we had a, a truck top on the, um, uh, on the bed. And that is how we safely transported them to our house. Since obviously our vehicle wasn't drivable. Um, anyway, so that's our story. Um, the piggies recovered, um, wonderfully. We did cancel. We had a full day of therapy pet visits the next day. We canceled it. Um, number one, we didn't have a vehicle, but, um, number two, we wanted to make sure to give them some time just to yeah. recover and myself included. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the story. It didn't seem like they were hurt at all. No. Wow. That's incredible. You know? And yeah, like I kind of like it happened. I'm like, you know, ow, that was an airbag. Um, just kind of checked my own body first. My car called 911 for me. So I like finished up that call. Um, and then as soon as everyone, you know, I was like, I don't need an ambulance. Um, but as soon as that call was completed, I got out and I opened up the back and they're just like, going, 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 you know, their typical wow. selves. And um, yeah. Did the other car, fine. did the other car make it past the deer or did they hit the other one? I, there they, was a car they weren't there. Radar. So I'm assuming, okay. yeah, one, I, I think they were, because I decelerated, I think they would, we would have gotten past before that deer would have gone over. Okay. Um, cause they were walking from the left into my lane. Their lane was, you know, on the right side. So, um, yeah, they were gone. Um, I was the only one. Um, yeah, there was another detail I just remembered. Um, but I'll remember it in just a little bit. I'm but sorry. that was important. I'm sorry. So, no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so the so you hit the deer, you pulled over to the left, got out of the road. Um, your car called 911. So they were on their way out. And then from there, you checked on the pigs. I checked on the piggies, yeah. Um, and they were doing fine. I actually set up some road flares just so you know we would be seen, happen to have those in the car. Um, and then I got back in the driver's seat, 
um, cause I was, you know, starting to shake and things like that, but I just like talked kindly to them. And, um, here's the detail I was re- um, forgetting. They were actually laying down. So mm. that is probably the main reason why they had zero injuries. We were probably an hour into our trip home. So, and it was late at night. It was probably seven, seven thirty PM. We had had a five to seven, um, stop at a, a senior living facility. So they were tired and they were both laying down. Mm. So when the deer hit, they were still laying down. So yeah. there was no, uh, no legs involved for right. them. Right. They yeah. weren't really thrown forward off their feet. <laughs> yeah. And, and one of the reasons people can, or how they can encourage um, a positioning like that for an animal traveling is by putting something comfortable, like a blanket in the crate. Yeah. We always have that. So they yeah. kind of like to snug into this. Yeah. And plus just keeping them used to riding in the car, because when you first oh take God. your pig in the car, they stand the whole time. They're right. nervous, right? Yeah. They, they don't want to relax, but the more they ride in the car, then the more they realize, okay, this is just, this is fine. You know, this is not this scary. Is routine and yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And of course they always give us a piece of their mind. They give us little oinks when we go over railroad tracks, we stop too fast, <laughs> but that's usually only if they're standing. <laughs> okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. So then when the, the, I don't know, you did you called like so we the had police, a police came, officer or, show okay. up. Yeah. We had a police officer show up. Um, obviously took my information. He waited um, with us until the tow truck showed up. Mm. Um, and so I just, while I was waiting for the officer and then after the officer um, came, I was emptying my car because <laughs> I knew that I was actually driving a rental. Thank God. Cause that I didn't have to go car shopping. Um, cause our shop was, our car was in the shop ironically for deer damage, um, over six months ago, body shops around here backed up, uh, because of the deer problem. And, um, so while I was waiting, um, for the tow truck and my ride, I was cleaning out my car. Cause I had literally all my supplies that oh I, my. you know, like a, a toddler piano, I had, you <laughs> know, ramps for the pigs. I had snout painting supplies. I just had it all. So, just um, kind of put everything in bags as I could. Um, I had extra blankets. So that was quite the ordeal to transfer to another car, but I left them in the car after I checked on them. I think I might have checked on them twice before our ride got there, but I wanted to disturb them as little as possible. Um, it was cold, but it wasn't cold in the car. Um, they had plenty of blankets. They produce a lot of body heat. And I knew that opening the car door and those police lights flashing in would just be more unsettling than helpful for you know, I can reassure them with my voice outside the crate. Um, so by the time our ride came, we just put all our stuff in the vehicle and then we loaded the pigs last, um, before of course the tow truck did any type of movement to the cars. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So then I remember, you know, I know you called me, we talked about this yeah. when it happened and, you know, you were concerned about them being bruised up or being traumatized or right. just not, you know, anything, <laughs> any trauma can cause um, behaviors to change. It can cause personality to change. So we were both concerned about that. Did you see anything, any signs that they, you know, behavior was off or maybe they were sore I did it. Um, we took the next day. I feel like I noticed maybe them challenging me a little more like, Oh, I don't want to do something. I don't want to move. What do you tell me to move or something like that? Um, like a little grouchiness. Um, mm-hmm. but they ate normal. They drank water normal. They walked normal. They were their normal personalities, mm-hmm. <laughs> which for Willow is very diva-ish and for Perry, you know, a little like jumpy or nervous. Um, so no, I didn't. And they were, I think we had a nice day the day after they were outside a lot, just rooting around and being happy pigs. And again, just resting. I do think they napped just a little longer, on um, the following day, but, um, I took, we would have had a day off. We were basically in. Um, uh, well, yeah, it was Christmas. Oh my goodness. It was like Christmas month. And we, we did 40 visits in 31 days. And so I had to reschedule four appointments the day that the day after our accident. Um, and so I had, you know, I was, we were planning on doing three or four days straight. So, uh, we had that break, but then we had a full day the next day. Um, and I forget all the little details I did to make sure that we would all be okay. But of course I watched them very closely. 
um, and made sure that they were, you know, kind of like mandatory rest in between stops or I'd do one and then give the other an hour break and then do the other one. Um, and I didn't notice any um, behavioral changes during our appointments, which would manifest as, you know, more, more nervousness, um, challenging me in public, um, you know, being skittish. Like I never forced them to like go into a room or, you know, the only thing I forced them to do is to go into elevators. And that's usually forced just looks like me picking them up and walking in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only thing that they're just not quite comfortable yet, but um, I didn't need to do any of that. Um, there was no, no psychological signs that they had been through something that was, you know, they needed more time to rest from before they, you know, did their job. Yeah, probably yeah, were, really. I think the best thing was to get them back. Yeah, I was just going to say that it. getting them back into the routine, getting them back in the car. In the car. Because... Yep. We had no trouble with that. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I even thought about, oh, this could be a problem for that. We just did it and it was normal. Amazing. And yeah, wow. it, it probably was really good to get them back into their routine because they were able to then, you know, put lots of car rides, put lots of visits in between what had happened to them. Well, and here's what's crazy is, you know, our first car ride was in another rental that smelled different, that looked different. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that I would mention is we had no damage to our crate. If, if there would have been any damage, you know, obviously it's kind of like a car seat right. you need to, you know, buy a new one. Um, and I think that's like my worst nightmare is getting rear-ended with the picks in the back. Yeah. So I was so grateful for a front, front damage. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when driving around with them, you know, I use my mirrors. I'm aware of who's behind me and what's going on. And um, in life, I tend to be more of a, well, that just won't happen or, you know, oh, they see me, they'll stop, you know, and I'm, I'm moving more towards my husband's way of driving, which is very uh, defensively, you yeah. know, you know, I'd hit the, hit the median before I'd assume that a trucker is just going to slow down. So, right. um, yeah, I'm just learning a lot because our pigs are so valuable to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we never want anything to happen to them. Yeah. They're family. But apart from a rear end collision. Yeah. Apart from a rear end collision, the, the luggage compartment is the safest. And, you know, rear end collision statistically, the probability is, is low enough that you wouldn't want to put them anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to know, like, just from this whole experience, what is your number one takeaway from this? Yeah. Um, I think after having time just to like process everything, um, I would say that my takeaway is that safely traveling in the cargo compartment saved my piggies from serious health issues, harm, death. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only mildly traumatizing to them, um, mm -hmm. more emotionally than anything. Um, and um, I do also believe that the way I handled the situation also contributed to the a lower amount of trauma based on the way I talked to them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if I would have gotten hurt and would have been screaming or something like that, I wouldn't have been able to control that. But right. you know, me speaking kindly to them, um, you know, staying calm, explaining what happened, yeah, staying calm, talking tenderly to them during something that would be a little more anxiety inducing, like um, you know, the transfer from the car to, you know, the other car, just talking to them. Um, and then going about a normal routine, um, that they feel comfortable with. Yeah. I am so relieved that this whole situation turned out so well. <laughs> um, it could have been really bad. Um, yeah. I'm just so relieved you're okay. They're okay. Lincoln wasn't in the car. Who is your son? <laughs> And so that was another one of my concerns that he was in the car. So, so good. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing this with us so that Absolutely. we can all learn from it and keep our piggies safe in the car. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me on again.